Thank you, Ozzy. The subject of uh, Roven Pedatsur uh, presentation will be how missile defense undermines deterrence, the Israeli case. Please. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me, and uh, Uzi and me are like a flying circus. We are wandering around the world talking about missile defense. He's for missile defense. I'm against missile defense. Uh, uh, when I look at the program, I'm the only one who is going to talk against missile defense, and I hope that our Minister of Defense will not call me messianic and obsessive. Uh, as Uzi said, uh, as Uzi said, our defense establishment decided that our our strategy against uh, ballistic missiles is based on ballistic missile defense, and this is the arrow. And as Uzi said, the beginning was the development of the arrow against conventional missiles, and now we are talking about defense against nuclear missiles, the Iranian nuclear missiles, which is a grave mistake. Let's start with the, what happened in the States. At the beginning of the 60s, there was a real debate about this issue. There were uh, people who were talking about uh, the need of missile defense and people who, are, who were against missile defense and, and this guy on the right, not on the left, the, minister, the Secretary of Defense over McNamara changed the, the strategy. What happened was that when he entered the, the, the Pentagon in 61, he was a great supporter of the missile defense. After several months, when he started thinking about the issues, he changed his mind. Because what happened was that he asked the army to conduct a study. The study was if there will be a, a Soviet nuclear missile attack, and we are going to have a, a very effective missile defense, what will happen? And they came back to uh, McNamara and said, with a smile, 70% of the Americans will survive. And then he smiled back and he said, but 60, people, 60 million people will die. We cannot allow it. And he changed the policy. So he rejected the, the idea that a missile defense that uh, will uh, save the life of uh, 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 120 million is better than uh, 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 no defense at all. And he developed the, the, MED, uh, the MED strategy, in which the, the idea was that both sides will know that there is no victory when you're using uh, nuclear missiles. Both sides are going to destroy. And for this, he said, Let's abandon the missile defense systems. This is a very complicated uh, concept because it's contrary to the natural human instincts of self-defense. When you say, when you say to, the, to, to, let's say, let's take the general, when you say to the general in the States, I know that you have a, a very good technology and you can intercept the Soviet missiles, but I offered you to consider, abandon the, the, the uh, missile defense. They looked at him like he's crazy. We have the technology, we are going to abandon it. And it took him uh, several years to 
until they accept his uh, argument. And then he started, uh, he, st he tried to convince the, the, the Soviets that this is the right way. Let's abandon on both sides the missile defense systems. And there is a very nice documentary uh, on the meeting between Kosygin and Johnson in New Jersey. And Johnson trying to convince Kosygin why the Soviets should abandon their uh, missile defense. And then Kosygin say, I don't understand. Defense is moral. Attack is not moral. And you are asking us to base our policy on attack. And then uh, Johnson, uh, McNamara was there. Jo Johnson said to me, Bob, please tell him why this is the right way. And it took several, uh, several years, and McNamara was not there in the Pentagon anymore. In 72, both superpower signed the, the, the ABM Treaty. And the ABM Treaty was the cornerstone of the stability during the, war, the Cold War. And uh, in the final declaration at the end of the review conference in 2000, the party said that the ABM Treaty was the cornerstone of strategic stability during the Cold War. Now, back to Israel. I know there are a lot of uh, differences between the situation, the relation, the scale between the superpower, two superpowers in Israel and Iran, but we can take the principal arguments of McNamara and apply them to the Israeli-Iranian case. Because since the Israeli, for Israel, the price of a nuclear missile eating Tel Aviv, for example, is unbearable, active defense, defense system is relevant only on one case, and Uzi said it. When you are talking about nuclear missiles, the aero system will be relevant in one case, when it provides an hermetic solution, hermetic pro protection, but again, as Uzi said, there is no hermetic solution when you are talking about missile defense. In a matter of fact, the leakage rate will be higher, much higher than we are talking about. Let's remember what happened with the Patriot in the first Gulf War. The Patriot arrived in Israel after a series of tests in which it achieved 100% it achieved rate of success, success rate. And what happened in the war? The success rate dropped to zero. So what will be the policy? It should be the policy. The minute, and again, I, I agree with Uzi, the minute the enemy, in this case Iran, will possess a, a nuclear missile, we have to regard to every missile as a nuclear missile. The, 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 the defense system cannot know, cannot know what, which one is the uh, nuclear missile or conventional missile. In such a case, the policy of deterrence should be formulated against nuclear threat. I'm not talking about defense against conventional missiles. This is another story. This is another lecture. I'm talking only against the nuclear missiles. So we have to, Israel, Will, will, there will be made clear to the enemy, in this case the Iran, the intolerable price that he will pay for any attempt to launch missile attack on Israel. The Israel message should be, if Israel detects a ballistic missile launching from Iran westbound, it, would wait, it wouldn't wait for that missile to hit. Israel will immediately launch its nuclear missiles. Israel will aim the Jericho missiles that we possess according to foreign sources to kill Iranian cities and destroy them. I don't believe that there is any Iranian national interest that justified sending Iran back to the Middle Ages just to kill 
several hundred thousand Zionists. So if the cost uh, of nuclear attack are raised to an intolerable level, it will certainly be neither side's interest to start a war. So in order to achieve this kind of deterrence, we need to develop a second strike capability. And again, according to foreign sources, we have nuclear with uh, uh, nuclear submarines and so on and so on. And let's uh, hope that the foreign sources are right. But more than that, the deployment of active defense in the case of nuclear threat is liable to spoil the Israeli deterrence, deterrence postures. Because significant, significant part of success of deterrence policy depends on the image in the eyes of the enemy of your deterrence. It will have a greater chance of success the more the opponent believes that the determination of the deterrent party to make use of its military means, in this case, uh, the Israeli nuclear means to retaliate for the damage. But the deployment of the aero system against nuclear missile will signal a negative message, message to Iran. The signal will indicate, in fact, that Israel is aware of the existence of nuclear missiles, Iranian nuclear missiles, and will attempt to intercept them. This action could interpret by the Iranians if that, as if Israel will wait in the case of an Iranian missile attack until the missile hit the ground in order to find out whether the warhead is nu nuclear and only then will decide on retaliation. Such, such message, message, of course, damages the deterrent image of Israel and the image of the degree of Israel determination to retaliate against the Iranians if they make any use of their nuclear weapons. These days, now, after the Iranian option is dead, Netanyahu must begin to formulate a new strategic conception. Even if he won't admit it, Netanyahu knows that the option, the, the option of attacking Iran has faded away. As a realist, he understands that the chances that Iran will ultimately possess nuclear weapons have increased. So in this case, the chances that are that Middle East, Middle Eastern model of MED, which will assure destruction, will be developed in the region. A central component of this kind of conception of our strategy is, uh, would be the abandonment of defensive, defensive system. And again, I'm talking only Israel vis-a-vis -vis Iran. I'm not talking about uh, the, the conventional threat from Hamas, from uh, Hezbollah, or from Syria. So this will happen eventually at the end, and we have to think about the day after, what will happen after the Iranian will have the weapons, and in this case, this is not the solution. Thank you. <laughs>